Our good friend Ed Gibbon wrote of ancient Rome that the devout polytheist, though fondly attached to his national rights, admitted with implicit faith the different religions of the earth. Fear, gratitude, and curiosity, a dream or an omen, the singular disorder or a distant journey perpetually disposed him to multiply the articles of his belief and to enlarge the list of his protectors. Polytheism is a chaotic and historically beautiful condition. It's not so hard to imagine our forefathers of antiquity, devoid as they were of explanations for earthquakes or debilitating diseases, stars. It's not so hard to imagine them assigning these mysterious forces a personage, a deity of what else distinctly human shape and character whose job it was to oversee this or that sphere of existence. This way of thinking is called mythos, in which the world and its forces are described by stories of holy origin. When the mythical man wants to explain the universe, he does it based on gods and powers, and if he is a more elegant thinker in fiction and allegory. The worldview of mythos and polytheism is necessarily disordered, anarchic. There need be no unifying principle to connect things because the universe as such is at the caprices of these gods and goddesses who, to read the poetry about them, agree about as much as we humans do. <laughs> now, there is one institution that can't exist in a world dominated exclusively by mythos, and that is the institution of science. Why? Well, because we know that the foundational principle of science is the principle of no contradiction. In other words, a scientific theory is only valid until a contradiction is found, in which case said theory must be revised or scrapped. Nothing in polytheism resembles this kind of logic. Contradiction in mythos is totally acceptable. So where does science come from? Well, this is perhaps the greatest irony of all. Science proceeds historically from monotheism, a belief system held originally by the Jews that there was one all-powerful God from whose massive mind comes the uniform ordered universe. Makes sense, doesn't it? For science to work, it must assume that the universe is organized by a unifying principle, an idea that doesn't appear until the early 6th century BC when exiled Jews in Babylon begin the process of redacting the many texts of the Hebrew tradition into what became the Old Testament. It was Thales, a pre-Socratic Miletian philosopher of the same era who saw that such a redaction, the singular texts and the singular God it describes, suggested the principle of no contradiction. If God created a universe, then it had to be ordered and uniform. And so in the person of Thales and the subsequent Socratic thinkers, the famous transition from mythos to logos takes place. Logos is a way of explanation concentrated around argument, what Aristotle later formalizes as logic, in which an arguer can be brought around to the other side of a logical dispute simply by being shown the contradiction in his argument. It's humbling to know the close causal historical connection between monotheism and modern science, a connection modern scientists are loath to mention. The truth is that science is as firmly rooted in belief as religion, for it cannot work without the assumption that the universe is ordered and follows the rule of no contradiction like science says it does. Now, as a postscript, you may be asking yourself, does this mean that religion is as valid an epistemological system as science, since they are both based on belief? Well, there is a very simple answer for that. No. We live in Los Angeles, the city of dreams. Los Angeles, the city of...